there has to be five parts to the machine. There's the motor bobbin assembly. There's a guide to guide the wire onto the bobbin. The wire has to be held under tension so that it winds tight on the bobbin. There's a counter to count the number of winds on the bobbin. You need something to guide the wire back and forth so that it builds up evenly in the bobbin. We take it part by part. I have a 120 volt continuous duty low RPM electric motor that I bought off the internet used. I've got a pulley wheel mounted to the shaft. I bolt an aluminum bar to that and I bolt the plastic bobbin to the bar. The pulley is held to the shaft with a set screw so I'm able to make minor adjustments in and out on the pulley wheel. The wire guide is made out of another piece of the plastic I-beam so it matches the bobbin. The tensioner is simply a large bolt screwed into the channel in the I-beam with a plastic block underneath it. I put adhesive felt in the bottom of the channel and on the block and the wire is pinched between them. The tighter you screw the bolt, the more the tension on the wire. It's important to have adjustments so I can fine tune everything. Still, it's not a moon rocket. This is a jogging counter meant to strap to the wrist. It had a mercury switch in it. I simply clipped the mercury switch out and added a magnetic proximity switch and then attached a magnet to the arm so that now the counter would register every time the arm swung past the proximity switch. The trickiest part was the tracking guide. I decided to use a simple clock motor, took the second hand and clipped the hand off leaving the disc that mounted to the shaft of the clock. I used a hot wire to stick a small hole in it. I took a piece of brazing rod, which is basically a stiff metal rod, bent it into a linkage where I could hook one end into that wheel. Now I drilled a hole through a piece of the I-beam, carved another piece of the plastic into a shaft to fit that hole, then put a small pinhole through it with a hot needle for the wire to go through at one end, then put another hole the brazing rod linkage could fit in. The second hand of the clock turns at 1 RPM, so every 60 seconds the linkage attached to the rod moves back and forth across the channel, laying the wire evenly into the bobbin as it turns. It turns at approximately 100 RPM with an 18 inch bobbin. There's a lot of tip speed here and I don't want to break the wire. Better to go slow. I've got the counter. I can go get a cup of coffee. That's the idea of having it totally automatic. I don't have to sit and watch, so it really doesn't matter. Better to make sure it works well than to worry about making it work fast. The final little piece was another piece of brazing rod through the channel at the very end so that when the bobbin came on its upstroke, it couldn't lift the wire totally out of the channel and possibly get hung up on its way back down. So it basically keeps the wire in the channel all the way to the end where the bobbin picks it up. And that's it, a coil winding machine. Let's see how it works in action.